Hello and welcome to the Heart Standard. It's been a while that I've, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to introduce it. Uh, yes, we are the Heart Standard. My name is Joel Skett and I am joined for the first time in certainly a few weeks by James Kearney. How's it going, James? I'm very well, thanks. Very good. Good to be back. Um, yes, yes, yeah. you you have been you've been in Germany um, drinking, as you informed me yesterday, your body weight. Oh no, on Tuesday, uh, drinking your body weight in German lager. How did that go? Yeah, yeah, not not far off it. I mean, I never want to look at a beer again. Uh, I think I've had yeah, I've had more beer than I could possibly like countenance ever again. So yeah, I'm done with beer. I'm done with sausages. And actually, weirdly, I'm done with the Euros as well. I've barely watched a game ever since Scotland got knocked out. So I guess I'm just better as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, it's it's slowed down after the group stages, that's for sure. But the Austria game Miller night was uh, uh, was well, was good, was good, and there's some cracking games this weekend. But we are here to talk about Heart of Midlothian Football Club because. They, because you have been in Germany the last few weeks, it's it's actually been very busy at Tain Castle. Mm. So we thought it would be wise to kind of look back at what has gone on over the last few weeks and basically bring you up to speed. Uh, we have, of course, had uh, Tom Irving, who's jumped on to discuss uh, Daniel Oyogoki and Musa Drama, uh, two of the two of the signings that weren't really expected. We'll kind of touch on them later on. But uh, well, we appreciate uh, Tom for, for for doing for doing that. We will look at everything that's kind of been happening uh, in Gorgi, each eleven, Tynecastle, Orium over the last few weeks. It might get to the point where we have to split this into two parts and do a second part tomorrow because there is a lot to get through. But I think probably the the big thing at the moment in terms of stuff that is new or has happened is that. I don't think we have a sponsor's message anymore, or uh, certainly at the moment. I've not been sent a new one after the uh, MPH Group's um, Dunfermline Showcase Bonanza, where you could win a trip to Trump, Trump Tower in, um, in in Las Vegas. So, yeah, uh, I've I've made a meal off the introduction, but I don't have to make a meal off our sponsor's message, which is good. Yeah, it makes a nice change of face. I mean, I would suggest enjoy it while you can. I mean, it'll be a matter of time before they've got another tongue twister for you. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, you're you're right. I mean, I, I, I ended up picking up picking up like quite a good time to go on holiday in the end because it basically just I left as what six new faces have arrived in the, in the door. Yep. Yeah. Potential. Uh, potential. Uh, camps getting ready. You know, there's a couple of discussions about players going out the way as well. It's, uh, yeah, you've, you've been kept busy anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I've not been having to scramble around for ideas. Of, uh, they've, they've, they've certainly fallen into uh, fall into our lap. So, yeah, there's plenty to get through. So, I suppose probably the, like the, the big one is the signings, which we will um, discuss. I'll just get the running order I sent to you earlier on. So, uh, kind of split them into two brackets the signings we were expecting so we have brought in Jan Dando we've brought in, brought in Blair Spittle but brought in Ryan Fulton and brought in James Penrice now the all so three of the four were featured in the uh, behind closed door friendly that took place on Wednesday uh, Blair Spittle got off the mark I believe it was a stunning goal which uh, is in keeping with his performances mm. last season. So we, we've obviously discussed these guys in, in, in great detail. Maybe Ryan Thornton less so, but let's face it, he's he's coming in to be a backup goalkeeper and yeah. to kind of just add to the goalkeeping depths. We've seen Liam McFarlane go out on loan. We've seen Harry Stone go out on loan. So kind of looking at it now, now that they're in the door with uh, Dander Spittle and Penrice, who... Who are you most excited about? Who do you think, whether it's short term or long term, who do you think is going to make the biggest impact? I, I think when you look at the three players, just in terms of the the sheer talent that they possess, um, I, I think for me, Dan does probably the standout. He seems to be the one that's maybe got most potential, the highest ceiling. Um, but I, I mean, I mean, we've said this before, but I do think that all three are very shrewd signings. I mean. Mm -hmm. Obviously, getting them all for free is obviously you know, very good business straight off the bat. But then, you know, I think particularly someone like you, someone like Danda, where he's been one of the most kind of creative players in the league over the last couple of seasons, he's clearly ready for that step up. And you know, he's got this past of you know he's played at Swansea City, he's, you know he's at Liverpool's academy as a youngster as well, I believe. So he's obviously 
a talented player. He's always had yeah. that in him. It's basically it coax out of him now. Um, and I think that, so, and they also just, you know, he's a number 10. He's got the, you know, the good hair. He looks fantastic. Like, yeah, that, that's kind of what you want. Uh, those are the kind of players that excite me. Spit, Spittle's another one again. I think you know, really good, solid signing. Particularly, like we said, coming off the season he's just had, he could have had, he must have had two or three contenders for goal of the season, to be honest. Yeah. And, I think having someone that can shoot from range like that is something that we've talked about before. That's something that Hearts have been missing. Um, and also just he gives that kind of that a bit more creativity in the final third, which again is something that has been missing. So I think those two are probably expect to have the biggest impact this season. And I think long term, I think James Penrice is another really sa- um, savvy addition. You know, he's like a player I've seen a lot playing for Partick Thistle. Um, it's always clear that he's going to be playing the Premiership one day. And obviously, I hope that was with Thistle, but that wasn't to be. Um, but he's a, he's a really good player. I think it, even at Livingston, and he's been playing. Let's, he's been holding his own there. And let's face it, particularly last season, it was a poor Livingston team. So it's hard to read too much into I think um, how his performance is there. But certainly, he's always a player who has got talent, has got potential, and it's all about just kind of ironing out the creases in his game. And I think we can. I think I'd like to think we will see that. So I think Penrice is one that's probably it'll probably take. Might, there might be a couple of years before we see him at, at his best, mm. but I mean, I still think he can play an impact straight away. I think he will be an important player um, next season and beyond. Yeah, so just on, it, it's interesting, I tried to, so I caught up with David Martindale to talk about James Pinerai, so I caught up, with, ca- caught up with a couple of guys who were at Ross County uh, when Dando was there, and I just couldn't, I'm um, going to hopefully catch up with Stuart Kettlewell soon to just discuss Blair Spittle and why last season was such a, such a success, but it was interesting that one of the guys I spoke to brought, who brought Danda to Ross County said that he's got the talent to go and play in the Premier League if he wants to. And then Dave Martindale was like, I reckon James Penrice is good enough for uh, Celtic or Rangers. Uh, and these yeah. fact, he's... So there's... I mean, there's obviously- let's be honest, Martindale does like bigging up his own players. Um, yeah, of, of course. He, he, does, yeah, he, does, he does. He does. He does. God bless him for it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And he was it was really positive about Penrice. He said basically that he was uh, certainly in the first half, he was a player of the season. He was a big miss when they uh, went and uh, kind of ended up getting relegated to miss large chunks, a uh, large chunk of the end of the season. But yeah, I think he is it's a good age as well, so he'll con- contribute. But yeah, you you he's, you break it down to two attacking midfielders. So of course they're the ones that you, you're eyeing to make a big yeah. impact. It's <sighs> I th- I'm, I'm edging towards Danda just because of his age. I think Spittle is, he's probably, he's in his prime now in that he's mm. hes had a lot of experience. He's played loads of games in the certainly in the Premiership and he just had coming off the best, uh, the best season of his, of his career, certainly uh, in terms of numbers. Hearts are getting a guy who I think is uh, ready to make that uh, step up. Um, but then Danda, I do think there's more to come from him. I think mm. we've, we've saw, seen the natural talent there. He's still only 25 so I think there's still more to come from him in terms of before he get enters his prime excitingly both of them he alluded to that score from outside the box I think Tom Irvin put up mm. a uh, up a couple of videos off on Twitter off their goals off their assists and a lot of goals were from outside the box we've seen at the Euros shooting from outside the box is, uh, seems to be back in vogue and it's sh- shots from outside the box are exciting goals from outside the box are class, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that's what they'll add. Um, not just solely that, but they'll add to the team. And in, in that, I'm interested to see how Naismith's going to fit them in because yeah. we know their best position, probably the best position for both of them, is the number ten. Well, that's the thing. I think with Spitland in particular, it's a bit more of an open question because I mean he's played right wing in the past. I don't see him doing yeah. that. I don't think he's got the pace for it. He's played centre mid to some success as well at different periods in his career. So that's a little bit more open. But I think the other thing is well that Danda and Spittle both share, which is surely going to be music to Hearts fans' ears, would be that they're both they can both hit a set piece. I mean, we yes. saw obviously we saw Danda do it at Tynecastle back in was that December when he scored that free kick? December, yeah, it was, yeah, it would be in December, yeah, the two two game. The two oh yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, we've already seen that and like but I mean Spittle's set um, he's always been Really proficient from set pieces, even when he was, you know, back at the likes of Dundee United and Partick Thistle in the early stage of his of his career. Um, and I think that he's another one where again, again, it's just obviously they both bring the creativity that was missing. They both bring shooting from distance that that's been missing, and then they also both bring set pieces. So that's another thing that's where Hearts haven't been doing as well as they could be doing. So I think that 
yeah, I think they're really savvy bits of business. Mm-hmm. You know, again, it's like this going around the division and looking at other, you know, other clubs in the league, looking at their players out of contract and just nabbing the best ones. And I think that that's a really good strategy it, it, on paper, at least to try and you know really cement that third place and make it you know kind of get hearts to pull away from that chasing pack and really establish themselves as a third force. Obviously, it's signings you can never you know you never know for sure if they're going to work out or not. But on paper, at least. It, this looks like a good window so far. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And we'll move on to more uh, other other signings we've made as well. I'm uh, just adding Graham here. I think Spittle will be the signing of the season. Graham, in terms of your other kind of comments on YouTube, I'm keeping a, a note of them because we're going to do a question and answer uh, episode probably next week at some point. So I will add them to our list. Moving on to the signings that perhaps we weren't expecting. So we have... Daniel, so uh, myself and Barry Anderson sat down with uh, uh, Daniel the other day and he told, uh, he, he gave us his pronunciation, I think it's O-U-G-O-K, so um, I will probably butcher that over the, um, over the uh, coming weeks and months, and of course Musa Drama as well. So I know you, I've, I've We'll get on to Gerald Taylor soon because you've been watching a bit of him for uh, an article that will be going up on the site when hopefully he uh, completes his deal. But in terms of the um, the, the signings being made, so Musa adds pace, directness, um, height to the forward line, and then you have Daniel Oyogoki, who is a versatile defender who can play in a uh, centre back and a four centre back and a three right back and right wing back. What do you make of uh, what do you make of those additions? Uh, well, yeah, I think Oyogoki's one that okay, we didn't know the name, we didn't know exactly who it was going to be, but mm-hmm. I think we knew there was going to be um, you know further additions at right back just because we know that Lindy Kiesel is also a way back at Wolves. He had his issues at times. Atkinson again struggling to get into the team towards the end of the season, and so I think that. Between the Ogiyoki and um, Taylor coming in as well, it's not the biggest surprise. No, I mean we'll go we'll on to talk about that. I'm sure in a, in a wee bit. Um, and then that one's well with Musa again. No one could have possibly predicted that uh, he came from was it the third tier in Spain. Fourth, yeah, right? fourth, fourth tier. So I think they won promotion to the third tier. So yeah, so, fourth so, tier, right? Sevilla's Sevilla's B side. Right. Okay. So there you go. So it's like you know it's. Let's be honest. We don't really know, do we? We don't. I don't I'll be honest. I don't know what to expect from this guy whatsoever. It's. I would think the jump from Spanish fourth division football to Scottish Premiership's probably a decent one, and obviously it's going to be mm-hmm. a different style of play and all that as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he how he gets on. Um, but yeah, I think I think we we were agreed that particularly towards the end of last season, there were times when we did think another striker was probably needed. Again, I think there may be other areas of the squad for. I would argue. That are in more urgent need, but I think another forward is certainly not going to go a mess, particularly given the fact that next season, I mean, Hearts will play over fifty games next season. It's almost yep. that's almost certain, barring disaster in the cups. So you, you are going to need a big squad in order to manage that. Um, <clears throat> and let's be honest, you know, Tagawa, yes, he scored a couple of goals at the end of the season, but for large spells of the season, didn't really offer much. Boyce has been injured for large spells of the season. Vargas might well end up be playing out wide. So I think another attacking option was probably needed, but um, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll keep banging that drum. I still think there needs to be another um, option for Beningami. If Beningami's injured or suspended or just needs a rest, you need another number six. You need someone to do it. That's exactly what Graham says. Do for another CDM would be good uh, to add to the squad. But yeah, we'll discuss, no doubt, discuss that uh, next week in terms of other transfer business that you think uh, needs to be done the, the, with with Musa, I think the, he is someone that and I know Nace have talked about it last year with Vargas and Callum Neunhoff, like two young guys that there won't be a lot asked of him early on, he's, tw- he's, he's still young, he's coming from a new uh, he's coming from a completely different football uh, culture, I really liked his interview with Hearts TV because he's a really confident guy and he basically just spoke that he thinks Scottish football is probably more suitable to his game, uh, kind of suits his game because he is direct. He um, when he gets the ball, he wants to he wants to run with it. He wants to run in behind. He's quick. Mm. Whereas obviously in Spain, it's a lot more technical. You need to be um, 
is to take up certain positions, whereas he can be a bit more off the cuff at Hearts, and I think that's what he will bring to the the attacking the attacking lineup. And the fact that he's he is he's, he's still young, and you've got all that options in the final third. You've got Oda, Forrest to can play out wide, and Vargas to play out wide, and then you've got Shanklin, Vargas, and Tagawa can play through the middle. Musa is not coming in to make an impact straight away, but he's good there. That once he gets up to uh, once he gets up to speed, then he'll get dripped in, and you'll see the uh, probably see flashes of him, and, and he'll be given time to ad- adapt. Whereas, like last season, we were a wee bit light, and Vargas, for example, was being asked to do a lot more. So, mm. I think it does make it's a, uh, a sensible signing if. Because Hearts obviously rate him and think he's got a lot of potential. There was a lot of interest in him from the English Championship in January, uh, I believe. So, yeah, he's definitely one one for the future. Whereas Oyugoki is someone who will play often. And then you look at his background, he's played a decent amount of first-team games in, in England. He's come through at Brentford, which is really a highly rated system of their, their, their B team as well. And he's played for the England, I think it's under 19s. And so he's got... He's got good experience yeah. and that versatility, which allows him to, with Hearts, complain the back three, complain the back four. So, yeah, both of them make sense and the profiles of them, both young, but both physical, big guys, aggressive. And you think that's what I think Hearts could have done a wee bit more of. And I think we, uh, me and Tom talk, talked about it being uh, a bit more um, physicality, a bit more power in the team. I certainly wouldn't go amiss. Well, yeah, I know you've been pining out for the you know big physical hearts. Yes, uh, you know you want those days back, and yeah, it's like a couple of these boys seem to seem to fit that bill quite nicely. Um, even just a nice, even just a nice balance between uh, what it is just uh, with, just now with that big physicality that uh, uh, other clubs love to moan about. Ah, uh, exactly. You know, like it, it, again, it's just you, you want to have different players to give you different ways of playing, to, so you can get to take on different teams. You know, I think we've seen that a lot uh, last season at Naismith does tailor the, the team and the team's tactics to the oppositions a lot of the time as well, while still having those kind of core fundamental principles to play. Um, and I think, the, particularly with Musa, I think the, the thing that a lot of fans will have been crying out for as, after last season will be just a bit of pace in the forward line. Like we, we've seen a lot of games this uh, last season where, you know, for, for all the you know qualities that something like Shankled has, for instance, like, you know, he's never going to, be a hundred meter sprinter, you know that's not that's not his game, um, and you know there have been games at times where it's like, oh, you know, I mean, I'm thinking particularly against games against Rangers in particular, where it's like, oh, just you know, test them, you know, try and get in behind, stretch the game a wee bit, and they just mm-hmm. you know look around the squad, and you think, oh, that no one can really really do that. So um, yeah, again, I think it just anything that provides a kind of another kind of weapon to add to the attacking arsenal can only be a good thing, particularly like we say if it's someone who does it's gives that bit of pace that has been lacking over the last year or so. And in talking of kind of pace and physicality, that's something that Gerard Taylor will certainly bring. He is the Costa Rican wing-back slash right-back. He was with Costa Rica at the Copa America. He plays for Deeper Deportivo Suppressor in the Costa Rican Premier League. They are, I think, the, the the biggest club, the most successful club in Costa Rica. He's won trophies there. He's played a lot of, a lot of games for them. It is uh, expected that he will join on a loan deal, which Hearts will have an option to make permanent, very similar to Vargas. And the Hearts have got a, they had to get a governing body exception because he's coming from um, outside the UK and uh, it's the whole uh, complexities of bringing players in that they can start the visa process. And it seems like he is going to be uh, coming across next week for um, a medical. So that's progressing. You have been watching a wee bit off him. What are your first... Uh, go, we won't go into uh, too much depth because we'll probably do a podcast on on the uh, or a show on its own about him. But what were your... What's your initial impressions? So, um, yeah, I guess... I, well, so I watched him because it, as I say, he was playing at the Cup of America. So I watched him the game against Paraguay from the other night. Uh, mm-hmm. Costa Rica won two one. He played the full ninety in that. So I watched that, and then I watched um, a bit of a game for a club. Didn't get quite through the end of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, he looks like kind of what you'd want in a modern wing back. You know, like you say, he's quite he's, he's strong, he's quick, um, and he seems to be quite aggressive as well. You know, he's he's quite happy playing. Uh, this, again, this might be a tactical thing, but um, certainly he was playing as, as a right wing back 
um, when Costa Rica, with Costa Rica playing a back three against Paraguay, and they were getting involved, really getting involved with the midfield, linking up and playing lots of one twos. Now they didn't always come off. Sometimes you know he his one was fine, but the two back then was a bit was a bit you know lack direction or a bit, a bit too much on it, whatever it might be. But there's there's certainly no fault in his endeavour. I mean, for the opening goal, I mean Costa Rica went one 0 up after like five minutes, I think it was, and. Uh, it's a good goal. It's a guy who just shoot, kind of shoots from distance and scores, but uh, that's a striker. But um, Taylor was the, the nearest and most advanced Costa Rican player for them. I mean, he was right up the edge of the at the edge of the uh, Paraguay box, balling forward. Um, and he, he's again, I've not watched enough of him yet. I need to watch him even more of him. I think he's fairly two footed. Um, I, I saw a goal that he scored in a league game um, towards the end of last year as well. When I guess playing it right back right wing back, he charges up the pitch and he cuts inside onto his left, kind of at the edge of the box and scuds it in and okay, maybe the goalie could do a wee bit better, but you know, the point is, he hits it and it's a good good hit on his left foot from distance, um, which again is always welcome, yeah, it's something that's a nice nice wee, like, kind of trick to have in your box, box tricks. So, yeah, initial impressions, um, yeah, seems strong, fast and energetic and willing to get up and down the flank, which is kind of what you want. Now, that was him playing as a wing-back. I've not had a chance to watch him as a right-back and a back four yet. That was obviously a, diff- a slightly different role, a bit more than him defensively. Um, so, I'll need, yeah, stay tuned on that. We'll need to come back to that one. But certainly, initial impressions, I can see... I can see the attraction. I can see why Naismith was interested. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him play predominantly, predominantly as a wing-back or as a full-back, maybe at home against sides we are expected to dominate the ball against, whereas um, uh, Oyugoki will be, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play mostly as a right side of centre-back or a right back in a, in a back four um, if playing away, um, if playing in bigger games where maybe we are not expected to have the ball, or even in uh, games if we're expected to do a lot of defending, whether it's in Europe or going to the old farm, if uh, Oyugoki plays as a, a wing back there as well, but so something that on that actually just that, that just reminded me of there that chimes of that. Um, again, I've not probably looked into this, but I was doing some reading around him and I found out that he used to play in mid. Taylor used to play in midfield mm. when he was younger. So again, maybe that that that, thing, that obviously suggests an extra bit of technical ability, which would make you a bit more suited to the attacking side of the game. So yeah. that, that that chimes with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's good that we have sorted the right hand side well seems to have sorted the right hand side uh, off defence and have a couple options there which brings me on to Toby Sibic and Nathaniel Atkinson the two guys in the squad uh, at the end of the season uh, after Olympiquisa left and went back to Wolves who are the who are who were the team's right side off defence Naismith confirmed earlier this week that they would be they'd likely be leaving they're not going to go to Tenerife um, because basically they're not seen as um they're, they're not going to be used as part of um, kind of. They're not going to get game time. Minutes are going to be yeah. reduced. That when Hearts come back from uh, Tenerife, they will rejoin the first team squad in the train. So they're not. It's not like they've been banished. They're going to be part of the first team squad, but they um, with the, the view that they could potentially move on and they're not going to be involved in terms of um, minutes and friendlies and playing competitive games going forward. So those two will um essentially up for sale. I don't think I don't think anyone is surprised by mm-hmm. that. Just you look at you mentioned it towards the end of last season. Uh Sibic, I think he featured seven or eight times in the second half of the season. Atkinson um likewise in terms of starts, I think he only made seven or eight starts in the uh, second half of the season. I uh, don't think he played one and made one substitute appearance after the split as well, uh, which was against Celtic, didn't have the, the best of games. Mm. And he, even at that time, thinking writing, writing's on the wall, and then you sign Daniel Oyokoki and the links with Gerald Taylor, and you're just thinking, well, who are the who are the, who are the players in the squad that are going to have to make space for these two players coming in? The obvious are Civic and Atkinson. So I really don't think it was any surprise when that was confirmed by the next one. No, exactly. I mean, it's you know, there are two players like you say where you know, as the season went went on and progressed, they're getting less and less game time, making making less and less of an impact. Um, and you know, while they've both you know they've both been you know decent enough players for the club, you know, they've both had their moments, had put in good performances. But I think there's a kind of an acknowledgement and understanding for everyone that it's probably best for a party the ways this time. I think that particularly going off last season. 
Atkinson, he actually did start it quite well, you know. Up until yeah, he started, he started really well and got, got that injury at St. him. And then it just seemed like he never really, he never really bounced back from that. Um, but yeah, I think that, I mean, you know, how long has Atkinson been at Hearts? What, two or three years? Something like that? Yeah, two, uh, two, two and a half years, I think. There, thereabouts. So, like, you know, he's had plenty of opportunities to kind of nail down that spot and make it his mm. own. And the truth of the matter is, he hasn't. You know, that, and that's you know, that's you know, it's not in the world. You know, that's football. But it's clear that I mean, we we talked about a lot towards the end of the season. It's clear that Hearts needed at least one right back. You know, probably two. Um, and that's I mean, like the, showing that, that like, even. As second choice right back, he maybe can't be fully trusted. Um, so it's fair for understand. When the Civic's another one again, who I think that um, I actually think you know, particularly in the second half of the season, I thought whenever he played, he was largely fine. To be honest, yeah, I he done well. Really much wrong, but I mean, it's also never you ever walk away be like, oh, how good was Toby Civic that game? The same way you might say about Rolls like, having the odd good game, or you can yeah. you know pretty much every week. Or Kingsley, you know, you never really got that impression of Civic again. Where it's like, I think it's just that case of. He's been a good squad player over the last year or so, but it seems quite clear that he's not going to become a first team regular anytime soon. So I think it's I think it's in everyone's interest if he moves on. I'm, I'm sure he will get a club. I'm sure both the players will have interest in them. You know, um, whether that be in Scotland or perhaps maybe a bit further afield. But I, I'm sure they'll both get clubs. I'm sure they both get snapped up, and hopefully Hearts get a wee bit of money for them both as well. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In an ideal world, that's uh, that's how it happens. Uh, that that's what happens, and that's how it unfolds. Yeah, I mean, you, you go back to last season, and when Hearts fans were uh, evaluating the squad, what was the priority? Priority everyone was seen as like you had to up- upgrade in the right uh, right yeah. back spot. Even as far back as January, people were yeah. saying that, you know. And it's just, I think, just it's, like you said, it's football. It is the natural evolution of Hearts trying to progress and get up to the next level. And it's, there's there's going to be times where players who have reached their ceiling at Hearts. You, I think you nailed on the head that, especially with Atkinson, just never really nailed down a, a, a start and or like just really kind of took that right back position um, on his own. I think I mean, maybe, like, maybe honest, you know, like, you know a, a one million year old Michael Smith was keeping out the team for a fair bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, yes, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's that, that is very fair, and I think. I would be interested to see what would have happened if he didn't get that injury against uh, against St. Mirren. Mm. Just didn't just didn't come back with the same kind of consistency. And I think that's the big thing with both him and him and Civic is that they never got to a point where you're just like, right, you can be trusted as a centre back or a right back. There's definitely talent there. I quite um Atkinson, I think he's really good uh, going forward or take, certainly taking the ball on, um, traveling with it. Sometimes issues where he kind of cuts in if he gets further up the field, reluctant to use his left foot. And I just think at times there was, um, I don't know, mentality or focus aspect where it just seems like um, it just didn't seem switched on at times. I'm looking at that Mm -hmm. Rangers game where uh, Hearts got battered in the, got battered certainly in the first half and he was just miles off it. And it's just at times where it seems, he seems to not, get up to the pace of the game in Scottish football. Whereas Civic, you look at his uh, kind of uh, physical capacity, very, very good. I would just like to see him be more aggressive, more assertive. So I definitely think there's a player in there. He's probably not been helped by what his what's his best position. Is it a right um is it a centre back in a back three, is it a centre back in a back four, is it a right back uh, or is it a certain uh, defensive midfielder, which he was in his first spell mm. at Hearts. But there's plenty there. He's legal. Look at Atkinson, Australian international. You look at uh, Civic, still young, a lot of experience, uh, versatile. That clubs were thinking, yes, we can, they can improve us, or we can, um, we can help them develop and maybe, and maybe kick on. But yeah, I think it's safe to say both was sensible to, uh, to kind of move them on and looked up great in that position. But they have had, um, yeah, had really good moments, especially Civic. His goal at Hibs will live long in the memory. Just about to mention that, yeah. His name liveth forevermore. Yes, uh, absolutely. And just interestingly, Graham here said, I thought Grant might be another who would leave, been here two years and show him flashes, but not enough. And Spittle and Danda would start before him plus Mackay. Grant is the other one I thought he... Um, you just wonder what his future looked like with, as Graham said, with Spittle and Mackay coming in. It's already Spittle and Danda coming in. Um, this is something probably um, ask Naismith next week in Tenerife or we get a chat with the players. Is I wonder if um, Grant might be 
used as a centre midfielder and kind of as in a Benny mode because he's played number six before when he was at Lincoln. I think he did really well in mm. that that role. So that might be one that could be considered, but um, that's me just speculating. So, um, so who knows? Yeah, no, I think with, with Grant, I mean, it, it, I think, you know, like Graham says, yeah, you know, other, op- other players have come in. There's a lot of options there now all of a sudden and it's quite a busy part of the pitch. I think the other thing as well to remember is with Grant is that obviously last season when the European squads were submitted, like one player had to miss out and it was him, you know, which again, kind of, it, it says what was standing in the squad was back then. Having said that, I think actually last season, I think he did that really annoying thing where he'd have like one good game, then like two or three anonymous games and then a good game and two or three anonymous games. And like, yeah. he very much blew hot and cold. But I do think over the piece, he did show himself to be quite a valuable addition. I think that I do, I do, I do wonder just because I was obviously there was, there was a lot of players who played in that kind of central midfield area. There's a lot of young guys as well, you know, like Savaden Dedham, Macaulay Tay, Finley Pollock. And I do wonder if someone like Grant is what, 29, I think, maybe 30 now. But, you know, certainly having someone of that kind of experience in the middle of the park can be a big thing, particularly in European games, even though I know we got left out last season. So, um, it'll be interesting. Oh, one other thing as well on Grant that I noticed that I saw today, there were some pictures of the players um, at the airport about, about to jet off to Tenerife. I think he's went bleach blonde with his hair. I, I, yeah. think, it was him. I think it was him. I couldn't really see for all people, but it looked like him. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's. Um, well, he's. See, I don't know. If, I can't remember if he's gone fully, uh, fully blonde. Uh, I had a look at a look as well, um, or he's done a Tagawa or Oda where he's, um, he's 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 kind of. Oh no, he looks like certainly top of his head is. Uh, is, is, is bleach is bleach blonde, um, aye. So f- f- we'll, play, we'll see see how yeah, that. Um, we've got a lovely new haircut. There we go. Yeah, we'll see how that uh, reacts in the sun of uh, of Tenerife. And we'll just finish up by the only other kind of really um, rumor or a bit of speculation what that merge while you're away was. There was some chat that uh, Kiyoski Tagawa was there was interest or a club in Japan were kind of keeping tabs on him as a potential option as a forward uh, to, to bring in there. Uh, I, don't, I think the Japanese transfer market opens later this month and is only open for a few weeks. Uh, when it emerged, there was no certainly no offers from any club or, in, uh, or like registered interest um, at Hearts Forum. But you could imagine Tagawa as someone who falls into a category of probably not actively looking to sell, will be used because of uh, the number of games. And But equally, if there was, just, I mean, this is the same for every player, but if there was an offer that was um, attractive to the club, that the club would likely be willing to listen. Yeah, I mean, he is another player for, for like, again, you know, like, we, we are all Tagawa fans here, you know, we're all card-carrying members of the Tagawa fan club. And we, we all want them to do well. And he did finish the season quite well, but you know, again, we need to be honest. You know, large stretches of the last season, he didn't offer much. And okay, there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. You know, whether or not he's the right tactical fit. You know, whether or not he's you know he's adapting, he's getting all these teammates, all the rest of it. But the fact of the matter is, he scored two goals all season. Oh, three. Sorry, he got three. Yeah, three. Sorry, yes. I beg, beg your pardon. He got three. Um, he was only against Cecil though, so no, does that count? Um, but anyway, I just think that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's one. He's a player who the jury's still out on. I think. You know, I think he's got a lot of goodwill behind him. And I think that, you know, it's, it's not as if fans are you know chasing him at the door just for, you know trying to get a bit of money for him and get rid of him. But I do think that this preseason in particular, like you know, particularly things like Tenerife, that will be really big for players like him and to be honest, players like Grant as well to an extent. Where I think there are guys who they're maybe on the fringes of the first team at the moment, but it's not inconceivable to see them kicking on and playing regularly but mm. it's, it's also not inconceivable to see them getting getting shifted on if a, if a good offer did, did come in I, I think with Tagawa though I think that it, it, he's had he's obviously had a year to kind of get used to it and acclimatise to Scottish football and he, has, he was improving as the year went on which I think is important and you know it is a long contract so it's, it was a three year deal he signed wasn't it? Yes So you know he's still got another two years left to run on that and he's still a relatively young player I, I I would be surprised if Hearts decided to cut their losses at this point with him, um, like to the, to the point where if he went out, maybe he'd go out on loan rather than it being a permanent transfer or something like that. But I, I would think that he's 
well, at least maybe over the, over the course of the season, he's probably not shown all that much. I think he's just about shown enough, to, particularly towards the end, to be to earn like another chance at it. You know, rather than just cut your loss and go that. No, yeah, rid of him, he's not good enough. You know, I, I think I think there's certainly within the fan base. I think there's there's excitement or intrigue to see what he can produce in the second the second season after what he uh, what he did towards the end of the season with his two goals, his mm. goal against uh, goalies against Rangers. And you kind of just you're just hoping that he has now got a full preseason at heart. So he could have now a full preseason at heart and the opportunity there to um to kind of kick on and and grow in in that position and just still be a very useful member of the squad. And if that happens then it means you don't have you're not having to replace him with another forward. That you're, yeah. you're you're well stocked. And the, the other thing as well is, that, I mean, the one thing he's not had, you know, since he's been at Hearts, is a run of games. You know, he's not mm-hmm. had that at all. So again, it seems a bit unfair to to bin him when he's not even had that opportunity. You know, um, and obviously a lot of it's you know, a lot of it's to things like Shanklin's fantastic form or you know, the way the team's set up. But I do think there is a good player in there with Tagal, and again, I would, I, I would just like to see him given a decent chance. And again, like. You know, that's what preseason's all about, you know, like you know, it's about showing that you are ready to compete with the first team, showing that you're ready to make that step up and making life difficult for Naismith by giving them some decisions to make. So I do think the next kind of two or three weeks will be a really important kind of period for the likes of Tagawa, Grant, and then probably a couple others as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, certainly on Tagawa, you look at the late morning game a week on Saturday. There's a very good chance he um, he could start that just because Shankland, uh, Shankland and Xander Clark come back to training next week and they'll be built back into it. I can't imagine they'll be involved against uh, Leighton Orient. Or if they are, mm. it'll be, it'll be uh, very, very few minutes, I'd imagine. And Same then with Var- Vargas as well. Yeah. yeah, Vargas is not back until I think uh, it's the, the week starting the 15th of, uh, 15th of July. So you've got essentially Tagawa, Musa and Liam Boyce is like the kind of the, the central forward option. So yeah, there's there's a real chance for him to um, kind of showcase that in a friendly early on. We will leave it there. We have still got plenty to cover, so but we'll do that tomorrow where we kind of talk about stuff that's been happening away from the pitch. And uh, for example, um, the where we'll see it, like season ticket uh, season ticket sales, the away kit, the fixture list, additions at Tyne Castle, Orium upgrades, and we'll look ahead to pre-season as well because uh, Hearts flew out to Tenerife today. Uh, I'll be flying out on Sunday for a few days. Uh, we're going to go into... Um, uh, going to go into the training camp on the Monday and the Wednesday, I believe. So we will have coverage from uh, Tenerife um, next week, but we'll talk about we'll talk about that more tomorrow as we say uh, continue to catch James up before the last few weeks of heart stuff. But until then, thank you very much, everyone, for your uh, a few of your attention, continued to engagement, support. I would ask if you could kindly like and subscribe. I believe this is a thing on YouTube, and it helps the channel to grow so please like and subscribe um buttons wherever they are uh, but until tomorrow thank you and goodbye bye